Darktable 4.4 came out about five months ago now, and as promised, I want to get some new features videos done before 4.6 arrives. Let's not waste any time. Hi, and welcome to episode 130 of Understanding Darktable, finally. All right, I promised that before Christmas, we will get out some content that covers the new features of Darktable 4.4. I'm gonna do this as individual videos for each thing, rather than just doing a summary of all of the new features. And the first thing I'm gonna cover is the first thing that was mentioned in the release notes under the big ones. This is, it is now possible to define multiple automatically applied presets against a single processing module. So what that means is for a given module, and for this example, I'm gonna use the color balance RGB module. You can have multiple presets that you have created with different parameter settings that are applied to images based on certain criteria for those images. To better visualize which module instance corresponds to which preset, the module label will be automatically set to the name of the preset that matches the current module's parameters. If you subsequently alter those parameters, the label will be cleared unless its parameters match to another preset, in which case it'll be changed to the name of the matched preset. If the module label has been hand edited, it will never be updated automatically. All right. That's a mouthful. What does it all mean? For this demonstration, I am going to add to library this image here, which has never been imported uh, into Darktable before. It's just a picture of my coffee cup that I shot a minute ago before I started recording the video. Very deliberately, I set the ISO to 400 and I set the focal length to around about 60 odd millimeters. Oh, look at that, 60 millimeters, there you go. So here's the idea. Let's suppose I want to have global saturation at minus 50. And we're going to save that as a preset. So we go to the hamburger menu for that module. We go store new preset. I'm going to call it sat minus 50. And we want to auto apply this preset to images which match whatever criteria we put in here. Now I'm going to use the model of my camera, which is ILCE 7M3, right? But that code there is the way that the EXIF metadata stores the model information for my camera. Your camera will have its own code and you can find that from the image information module within Darktable, or you may not choose to use the model name as one of your criteria. You might choose something else. So I'm gonna set ISO to 400 and I'm gonna say anything with a focal length between 50 and 75 mil, because I know that that is certainly gonna pick up this image here. So any image that I import that matches this model name that was shot at 400 ISO and where the focal length was between 50 and 75 mil, Darktable is going to automatically enable the color balance RGB module and it is going to use this SAT-50 preset. Now I'm going to reset that and I'm going to go for something crazy. We'll just go a little bit of saturation boost, bit of chroma boost, bit of vibrance boost, and let's just dial in a random hue shift just to be crazy. And we're going to save that as a new preset. And we'll call it crazy, because it is crazy. And again, we want to auto apply this preset to matching images. Now, I might choose not to use the model name here, but I will go 400 ISO. And I will set it to be, let's say, everything from 50 to 100 mil. So again, for this particular sample image, it is going to meet those criteria because the focal length is within that range and it was shot at 400 ISO. So we click on that, we click OK. Now what I'm going to do is remove this image from Darktable's library. And I'm going to come over to my file manager here and I'm going to delete that XMP file. So now, as far as Darktable is concerned, it has never seen this image. So we add to library, we add that image again. And as you can see, Darktable has added 
both instances of the color balance RGB module to this image and as promised in the release notes, the name of the preset has been applied to the module header to let you know that this first instance of the color balance RGB is the SAT minus 50 preset and the second instance is the crazy preset. That's the whole idea of what all of that gobbledygook in the release notes was talking about. It's not gobbledygook, it was actually quite well written, but it was quite a lot to take in when you hadn't seen a visual demonstration of what it was going to do. That's it. As you can see, there's a new option, Preferences Darkroom Automatically Update Module Name has been introduced to allow this functionality to be disabled. Now, I'm not sure why you would want to disable that feature. I think the idea of having the name automatically applied to it is a good move because it lets you know exactly what each module's doing, uh, but at least that option is there for you. So that's under Preferences, Darkroom, Automatically, where are you, where are you, where are you? Ah, right at the bottom, Automatically Update Module Name and it is set by default, but if you don't want that to happen, you can uncheck that and then it won't happen in future. All right, so that's the first of the new features. I uh, hope you enjoyed that. hope you can find some use for it and uh, I'll talk to you again in the very near future. Take care.